Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. <laughs> so this amp is pretty funny. It's like a small, angry dog. But unlike an overly ambitious chihuahua, this thing can actually fuck some shit up. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is why I don't ad-lib the intros. What I mean by that is the amp might be small, but it slaps hard. Absolutely stacked with features that might make this the only amp you would need for your entire rig. I've heard some people refer to it as the two-based alternative to a digital modeler, which is a very bold claim indeed. Been very excited to see if that claim holds any water. So let's take a closer look. Before we get into the main review section, I'd just like to take a quick second and thank Angle for sending this Iron Ball Special Edition over for us to check out together. <laughs> Recently just discovered how good angles are this year. They're not too common in my neck of the woods. Been using the Savage a lot on the channel and I absolutely love it. People ask if I have any relation to the company because of my last name. No, I wish, but it did help get the conversation started at NAMM. So yeah, thanks to them for sending this over and for sponsoring the video. If you go in to enjoy it at any time, fuck that like button up. It actually really helps out and let's get into it. <laughs> So obviously that wasn't the most brutal or the most complicated demo tracks ever, but I went with it because I think it really demonstrates what's so friggin' cool about this amp. First of all, the tone. I'm always kind of wary of these small EL84 powered lunchbox heads, but I should know by now, never doubt angle. The Iron Ball SE is small, but it sounds like an angle amp. The high gain tone is crazy good. It's tight, it's aggressive, it's thick and well-defined. <laughs> So tight and well-defined, in fact, that quad tracking with this thing for the demo was super easy. I hadn't even planned on doing it. I had already tracked all the rhythms with the Stingray and I was just playing around with the 10S and was like, you know what? This sounds really good. It sounded very throaty. <laughs> Pringle got up. She's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> this is why we do sound demos. So you can actually hear it because some of these amp buzzwords, I don't know, do they even mean anything? <laughs> Now, obviously with only 20 watts, it has much less headroom than something like the 120 watt Savage. So I was a bit concerned everything would sound super thin and compressed. Nope, the Iron Ball be sounding thick though. And the compression hasn't killed the character of the guitars either. Even with that much gain, you can still tell the tracks apart. 
we've hit the most important thing for a metal focused tube amp. It sounds brutal and it feels satisfying to play through. So already it gets a thumbs up on this channel. Something a lot of people sleep on Angle Amps for though is the clean tone. And that's probably partially because of the names. Like Angle's amp names are so I mean, there's no chill at all. They're all so intense. You got the fireball, you got the powerball, you got the invader. The one I use all the time is the savage, now the iron ball, and it glows red. So you probably wouldn't expect a nice glassy vintage clean tone, and yet, here we are. <laughs> And it sounds especially good in this particular amp due to the built-in delay and reverb effects. So there's the clean channel, the dirty channel, and each one is also boostable for a de facto four channel amp. The clean channel can be boosted into a crunch, the lead channel can be boosted into just an absolute chaotic monster. Last NAM, I actually asked Jurgen, the CEO of Engel, to help me understand the lineup a little bit more, and it's still confusing. It would appear that everything in the lineup kicks ass and sounds brutal, albeit in slightly different ways tonally and with different feature sets. And that last point is really where the special edition gets ridiculous over the regular Iron Ball variant. You may have noticed the crazy amount of switches on the front panel over here. Already that's a lot, looks like the dank Starship Enterprise. And then we flip it over to the back of the amp and oh dear god. In typical angle fashion, there are so many features built in. At first it's a bit overwhelming. Felt a bit like operating a Soviet era submarine. Flip a switch and it's deathly quiet, like did I just activate the noise gate or a nuclear holocaust? Unclear. But once we actually start using it and break everything down, it's not as bad as it might first seem. The front panel switches give you easy access to activate all the built-in effects and digital features, delay, reverb, noise gate, gain boost, master volume boost, channel switch, effects loop, and MIDI store. Meanwhile, the back panel is where you'll do all the finer adjustments. Delay mix, time, and feedback can all be altered to taste. From the looks of it, that extra adjustability was added later on since they're not on the stock photos on the website. And I'm glad they did because it adds to this amp's situational adaptability. It makes the amp more useful in more situations. And I love how there's an actual visual indicator of the delay speed on the front of the amp. Reverb level can also be adjusted. <laughs> And then, of course, the noise gate threshold. I've been saying it for a while, a built-in noise gate should just be a standard feature on modern high gain heads. It just makes sense, and Angle has included a great one. It's responsive, transparent, and very, very useful. Thank you. 
Another incredibly useful feature, the power soak. The two EL84s provide a maximum of 20 watts, which can then be dropped to five watts or one watt. So if you wanna crank it to that sweet tube spot through a cab without waking anybody up, that's an option. Or you can do what I do in the city apartment. The speaker output can be completely turned off and you can run it directly into an interface or to a PA using impulse responses, no cab required. There's even a headphone jack if you literally just want to use the app and nothing else for practice. An impulse response, by the way, is essentially a virtual mic'd cab. So apart from not having to carry around a physical cab, you don't have to worry about any of those cab associated issues like mic placement, for example. You just plug in and get a consistent sound from the moment you power on. The stock amp comes with three angle IRs captured from some of their own Vintage 30 loaded cabs. <laughs> Then, if you're like me and have a couple of custom IRs you really like, there are an additional five slots that can be filled via USB transfer. And I love that. I mean, it makes the amp virtually infinitely customizable through software. <laughs> You can have your preferred 412 for high gain, then you can have another that you prefer for crunch, and maybe like a 212 for cleans. Along with built-in noise gates, that's another feature that is popping up more and more on modern amps, and I am all about it. And of course, all these setups can be saved and recalled on the fly via MIDI. Now, unfortunately, I somehow still don't have a MIDI controller, so I can't directly show you exactly how that works. But just know the concept is you can control all these settings and features, save them to a patch, and recall them on the fly with a single press of a button. You know, rather than fiddling around with all the switches on the front and the knobs on the back. And for my purposes right now, not having a MIDI controller, that's actually okay. You know, I'm just using it here for now. But live, say you're going from a solo to a clean bridge section. You got the lead with the gain boost and a bunch of delay through an angle 4x12IR instantly into a clean channel drenched in reverb through a 2x12IR. A MIDI controller is an absolute must. It's a game changer. It unlocks an entire new dimension of usability to the amp. So that's just something to think about. Like this amp literally does so much, but okay, the Iron Ball SE isn't exactly a cheap amp. Amps designed and built in Germany rarely are, but damn, it delivers in every department. Again, first and foremost, it sounds brutal. Then you add the built-in adjustable delay and reverb effects, a solid noise gate, power soak, integrated IR loader and XLR out. It glows red. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about it. The all metal construction is really good. Even compared to other solidly built lunchbox head, this one is an absolute unit. So yeah, I love amps like these. There's a trend now of marrying the natural tube tone so many of us love with modern technological conveniences, and I love it. I am so about it. Because unlike a modeler that tries to copy the sounds of tube amps as faithfully as possible, and I do think that technology is really cool too, amps sound unique. Like this doesn't sound like the Rev G20, it doesn't sound like the Hughes & Kettner Grandmeister 40 Deluxe. It's got the angle character, but it doesn't sound like the Savage either. It's unique. And I love how amp companies are adapting, like pulling this, as far as the rest of the world is concerned, obsolete tube technology into the 21st century with built-in noise gates and IR loaders. And Engels provided one of the best sounding examples of this in the Iron Ball SE. The user experience is still a little intimidating the first time you see it, but once you get over the initial shock, it's actually quite intuitive. The learning curve is nowhere near as steep as a savage, let's just put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, just a really great sounding amp, very versatile studio or live gig tool. And I think it's an awesome indicator of where Angle and tube amps in general are heading for the next couple of years. The one thing I think would be extra useful with an amp like this is if you could save EQ settings to be automatically recalled when you switch to each channel. That would be really nice given that it's got a shared EQ section, but I'm not an amp designer. I don't know how easy or probably 
how difficult that would be. However, given how much technology is built into this little beast, if anyone could figure it out, it's Angle. So of course, those are just my opinions on the Iron Ball SE. I'm really curious to know what you think about this and about tube amps, especially lunchbox heads going into the future. You know, just a few years ago, you had a lot of people saying that tube amps were dead, they were obsolete, modelers were the future. And what we've got instead is there have been advances in modeler technology, like they have gotten better, but tube amp manufacturers have also started to up their game. I mean, look at this fucking thing. And I feel like everybody says this every year, but there's never been a better time to be a guitar player. I mean, yeah, we've got like supply chain fuckery right now, but once everything calms down, I mean, the product selection is ridiculous. There's so much choice now. Like modelers got better and they forced tube amps to be better than they've ever been too. Anyways, uh, I don't know where this ramble rant is going. Like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube bullshit it really helps out. Gain favor with the algorithm god. Social media, merch, and discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.